Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach. Today we're doing another video video. Today we're looking at Superstar Money's video going over marketing specifically in this video. And I'm going to go over what I'm thinking about when it comes to Vivi's marketing. Let's jump into it very soon. I want to thank you, Rob and Joe, for doing this interview with Reese. And I also want to say sorry in advance to Joe for basically covering his face with my face. But we, we've got to make videos, you know? Speaking of marketing, and I know you referred to Alex in the last one, but we're going to ask you anyways. Have the macroeconomic conditions changed your marketing strategy at all? We've been tracking, obviously, Google Trends. We've been tracking uh, like the recession, right? All the data coming in regarding the appetite for NFTs. You know, you need people who tend to go after them or investors or people who have free cash flow to actually go and buy them. Have you changed at all your marketing strategy? Like, for example, when we talked about Disney tweeting the golden moments, that brought us in, uh, but we haven't really seen them that active since. Is that related to the macroeconomics? Is that related to the app maybe not being ready yet? Can you can you confirm? Uh, I would relate it more to the app not being ready. Yeah, especially marketing from outside, right? Like obviously Comic Con, huge event, great way to intro, and you know, typically in marketing, you have touch points, right? Like I don't think anyone pays attention to ads on Facebook or Twitter or any of those things anymore, right? But the first touch point might be. Comic-Con and then the next one's an article you read and then the next one's something else. And that might be enough to, to kind of bring you into the app. So it's not, I think people expect us to just kind of throw VV all over billboards all over the city and that's going to bring in users, right? But it's just not how human psychology works. It's not how marketing works. It's just not the, the play there. Now for us, not having payout was a huge hindrance to marketing, right? And, and you don't really want to push a product that instantly leads to complaint because then you end up with app store reviews that aren't good and, and all these things, even though there's warnings in the app and all the obvious things, right? So now that that pillar is in, we can really start to branch out and, and spread the wings, as they say, and, and market elsewhere. Now, whether that comes with co-tweets from, from Disney and Marvel and things like that, maybe, right? I think we're seeing it more with the, um, the cross-promotional stuff, right? The, the movie cinema posters, things like that, right? AMC were the ones that put that that out, not us, mm -hmm. then we retweeted, uh, or UCI in Italy and Germany. Um, so it, it will always vary, right? And it will. So I want to just jump in here because we're talking about kind of like first part, part advertising in a way, in that it's like, say, we're talking about Disney, for example. Um, you know, yes, we can have uh, tweets from Disney, and that's cool. I do wonder actually how much traffic those tweets bring in. But I also think, and this is going to be a very per drop basis because every drop is incredibly different. You know, we see drops about the US Postal Services and then the next day we'll see a drop with a 3D version of Elsa and then we'll see a poster of a McLaren. Not, I'm not leaking any, I don't even know any IPs that are coming to the table, but, you know, there is such a different... Um, such a variety, I should say, and range of different products that we get from VV. You know, the, the VV app itself is basically just building the technology for these different products to thrive. Because again, you have very de different demographics. Now, the one demographic that spans all of it is investors, but that is not the wider demographic. That is a very small niche part of the world, right? Realistically, when we're looking at consumer goods and we're looking at consumer collectibles, like the 3D collectibles of Disney and stuff, even the golden moment stuff, for example. I don't know how that appeals to a six-year-old who enjoys Pixar films. It's really cool for the nerds, which is awesome, and is able to monetize it. But, you know, really, I think when we see, especially, and this is something I'm aware of, when we see a video game, which we're still lacking so hard on right now, we're lacking so hard on gaming IPs, it's crazy. But I don't blame Vivi for that either, because what Reese is saying as well is that maybe the app is not ready yet. And of course, you know, the reviews and all these different things, you only get a, a first impression once, etc. You know, gamers will have high expectations. They bring in stuff, you know, they bring in any IP in gaming right now. If they were to have Twitch streamers use the VV app and show people how to, you know, and show people, let's say, a new Fortnite skin or a new Call of Duty item or whatever it might be, realistically, the turnout from that stream on Twitch 
would, in my opinion, eclipse what you would see even from a Disney tweet, uh, especially with the right influencers on board, etc. Maybe not even being paid. That's when it comes into earned media where the streamer just does it because they're getting more viewership by showing their collectible, etc. Those are going to do huge. But again, say you have a streamer who has 50,000 people watching them and say you have, you know, more streamers who have 1,000, 2,000 and there's collateral viewership, etc. It all turns over to a very large number of gamers, you know, going after that collectible, etc. But if the app's not ready for it, then it's going to go to crap. It was always very, depending on the brand, um, in the early days, we would just roll out press release after press release right, to announce these new licenses. Um, but that, if you do that too much, you, you kind of lose the people that are pushing them out, lose interest in pushing out the next one, right? Even though it is every single one of them is monumental for the NFT industry, it gets a bit stale from a story point of view if that's kind of all you, you're pushing out there, right? Yeah. Um, so you try to really just spread the crumbs, right? You, you try to you try to move that out. So you have press releases on one side to announce these kind of big brands. We'll, we'll you see these kind of mainstream publications like David Den, would just see that Japanese magazine. I don't know if anyone saw that on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah, on Twitter. Um, from a community point of view, obviously we're we're always jumping into these interviews and available for AMAs. Now I wouldn't call that marketing per se, but it's definitely helping to disseminate information amongst yeah. everybody in the community um the amas aren't marketing but they definitely are retention for the hardcore community if they weren't doing constant amas constant podcasts like this for example the community would slow down for sure in interest etc even with how exciting a product vb has there needs to be communication and that's something that vb has done since i've known of vb and those events, at least right now, like they are so targeted in terms of our audience. And I would argue uh, DesignerCon probably even more so than Comic-Con, right? I know the Comic-Con booth was incredible and for a New York Comic-Con later in the year, but DesignerCon really is that designer toy plush collectible, you know, they, all those kind of brands. And most of the artists that we drop are at the event, right? Mm -hmm. So it's much more personal. These guys have their own followings. Um, I think they're... it's easier to to encourage them to go and check out vivi because they're fans of this work and there's a face attached to it instead of like the big conglomerate of marvel or disney um, i think one of the reasons why what they're doing works nicely and what vivi is doing is very much building an incredibly dedicated following and community right now rather than you know i think what vivi's really doing is deepening its connection rather than widening because we have seen the same thing kind of being posted over and over being for example marvel comics right we were like for months we were like marvel's gonna come i'm telling you it's gonna come you know different youtubers we're so, we're talking about it twitter people etc we're talking about it and now we have like a marvel comic every other day uh, and you know i stopped posting about them because it's like you know it's constant um and for those who who enjoy it that's great but marvel marvel comics are not my thing maybe at some point if i really want to get more views on it then i guess i'll start doing it more i guess but um either way they very much deepened on the interest rather than widened it out because we we just have the same thing happening over and over it's generally you know uh, a fashion thing like lvmh isn't it i think um or usps you know you'll have uh, the stamps you'll have art posters we'll have uh, 3d collectibles of superheroes um then we have disney stuff but all of it is very much similar stuff just a different ip oftentimes and we haven't seen them really expand and i'm not saying they should have by now because in 2022 i don't think the app's there yet and so i think eventually we'll see it widen out and then we'll see broader marketing strategy i do wonder what we're going to see as far as the vb metaverse is concerned that's something i want to talk about at some point later on but that being said, this is why they can't be pushing marketing everywhere right now. There are so many different things they could be doing to marketing, but it wouldn't make sense. It's not the right time. I just don't think the product's there yet. I do wonder when the product will be there. You know, I started being in VV back in 2021, I believe, early 2021, and it was a different story to what it is now but a lot of us were thinking this is five-year timelines and it definitely is not 
you know, it's definitely at least five years. I don't think we're expecting anything magical within the first year or even two. I do wonder where the Vivo is going. I thought it was meant to be something was meant to be happening this year, but I feel like that's being pushed. I haven't kept up to date with all of it, but that's what I'm trying to do now. That being said, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you again to the Superstar guys for posting this. And uh, yeah, we'll continue going over the marketing, the development of VV over this channel.